If you updated to the iPhone 16 or 16 Pro, you now have an action button. You can program this button to many different actions, including things like a flashlight, even live translate. But there are two powerful controls here at the end, which allows you to program any control center action to that button or any shortcut. So in this video, I'm gonna give you 15 shortcut ideas that are easy to build, plus you could download them in the video description, that makes the action button super powerful. It could be a dedicated ChatGPT voice conversation button. Use new iOS 18 actions to toggle a smart home device like your garage. Create a makeshift clipboard manager right on your iPhone. And I'll get into some advanced automations using if statements to have the action button change its function, whether you're in different focus modes or different times of day. And before we even get to the shortcuts, I'm gonna give you three bonus tips right here at the top. You may have seen this when someone activates the action button, and this is actually a shortcuts folder. It looks a little nicer than a shortcuts menu, and this is easy to create. Just go to the shortcuts app here on your iPhone, then in your folder view, just tap the new folder action up here, title your folder, and put whatever actions you would like in that folder. You see here I have my action button folder, and these are all the shortcuts we're going to be going over in a moment, and it will show the first eight shortcuts when you program it to a folder. Then just go over to settings, scroll down to where you see action button, it might be on one of these earlier options, but scroll towards the end where you see shortcuts, tap here, and then search for the show folder action here and choose the folder that you created in the shortcuts app. Now, whenever you hold the action button, you'll actually have the folder come up and you can quickly access your top eight shortcuts. Bonus tip number two, if we go to the settings app and then back into the action button settings, not only can you program a shortcut, but a new option with iOS 18 is access to any control center action. I did an entire video on 32 great apps that add third-party actions to Control Center. I'll link it above and in the description. But any of those actions are also available for the action button. Like Bear My Notes app, you can have create a new note programmed to the action button. If I tap that, now wherever I am on my iPhone, I hold the action button and it automatically creates a new note in Bear. And if you're on the iPhone 16, you now have that dedicated camera control button. Well, then you can use the action button to launch a third-party camera app like Halide. So you have the stock camera on camera control and halide on the action button. And one last bonus tip before we get to the shortcuts, you can change your lock screen icons with iOS 18. So just tap and hold when you're looking at your lock screen, hit customize, go back to the lock screen. Then you can swap out the default flashlight and camera icons for whatever control center action you'd like. All right, let's get to the shortcuts. A lot of these early shortcuts are simple one action shortcuts, although you could still just directly download them with the links below. But if you would like a dedicated ChatGPT voice conversation button, you can use this action. You do need the ChatGPT app installed on your phone. And when you search for ChatGPT, the start voice conversation action is all you need. Once you created that shortcut, just go over to the action button settings, back to the shortcut option, search for that shortcut name, set it, and now you have a ChatGPT button. Holding the action button for a second, now starts that conversation. What's the average rainfall in the Amazon basin? The average annual rainfall in the Amazon basin is around 80 to 120 inches. And now you can quickly have two voice assistants at the touch of a finger. Number two, a great update to iOS 18 is the HomeKit toggle action. Before you used to have to do an if statement and get the status of your devices. But now if you search for toggle, you'll see this action unique to iOS 18, which is toggle accessory state. Once you add that action, choose what device you'd like to toggle. I'm gonna choose my garage door. And now whenever I run this action, it will actually open or close my garage door depending on its state. Map that to the action button, and now your iPhone has become a garage door opener. And while we're in the garage, you can also use the action button as a trunk opener, let's say for your Tesla. Now there's no toggle option here, so you would actually have to have a second action to close it, and there's no way to get the status of the trunk. But if you just wanna be able to quickly open the trunk, the action button can do that too. Number four, you can use the action button to wake Apple TVs and show the remote control for a specific TV. I've added two actions here, wake Apple TV and then show remote control. Here we can choose the Apple TV we want. Let's go with the Studio Apple TV, and then we can also open the remote control for that Apple TV. Now, whenever we run this shortcut, even if it's from the action button, it's going to wake that Apple TV and show the remote so I can start controlling it right away. You can also combine multiple actions to open a specific app on that Apple TV. I actually have an entire video on Apple TV shortcuts. I'll link it above and in the description. Number five, I call this my super mute shortcut. While you can have silent mode set to the action button, Oftentimes, I also want the media volume set to zero. This shortcut is a little more complicated, download it in the video description, and you need a third-party app called Toolbox Pro. But what this does is it will see, is your phone in silent mode? If not, it will set it to silent and turn the media volume to 0%. 
So if you open a social media app, it's not gonna play a video loudly while you're in the waiting room. And likewise, if your phone is already silent, then it will disable silent mode and turn that media volume up to 50%. When I run this shortcut, I was already in silent mode, so you'll actually see the volume goes to 50%, and if I check the control center, I'm now out of silent mode. Tap it again, and then I'll go into silent mode, and that media volume goes to 0%. And there's confirmation that I'm in silence. A nice way to make sure your phone's not gonna make any sounds. Number six, if you wanna try a lot of different things with the action button, you can actually quickly jump to that settings page with this URL scheme. You just use the action open URL, you type this or copy and paste it, or just download this shortcut in the description, and then whenever you run this shortcut, it will actually go to the action button settings. If you do the shortcuts folder like I showed you at the beginning, it's a nice one just to have permanently there so you can jump to the action button settings whenever you'd like. Number seven, if you have multiple focus modes and you wanna be able to quickly access whichever you'd like, I have one action here, and it's actually the set focus action. I'm gonna re-add it so you can see what it's like to build it. Choose the set focus action, and then instead of turn, I'm actually gonna tap the word turn and change it to toggle. Then I can choose a specific focus mode if you wanna just directly go into one, or you can choose to ask each time, and then you can choose what focus mode will be enabled. I'll go out of my filming focus mode just for now, and if I run the focus action, you'll see a menu automatically of all the focus modes you have programmed. I can choose a focus mode like filming, and now I'm in my filming focus mode. And because we chose to toggle as the first action, I can run the same action again, tap the filming focus mode, and now it's gonna toggle it off. Quick way to enable or disable focus modes with the action button. Also, another great menu you can have on the action button are HomeKit scenes. Here I've started with a choose with menu action and then listed multiple HomeKit scenes, ones that I use very often, and then under each menu item, I have a set home control action to run that particular scene. You can use the voice assistant to do this, but I actually think it's pretty fast to do the action button, tap a scene, and you run it automatically. And now we're gonna get into some multi-step shortcuts you can program for the action button. This is a shortcut I created recently during one of the shortcuts request videos where I build shortcuts that you ask for. You can see the latest video on that up here. And I know it's been a minute since I've done a request video, but subscribe because it's coming soon once all the iPhone 16 stuff is a little past. So what this shortcut does, it actually pulls your next calendar event from a specific calendar, gets the location if you have an address attached to that event, gets driving directions from your current location to the event location, starts pre-making a text, says, sorry, running late, be there in, and then we'll pull that travel time automatically. And then the final action we can add is send message. This could work with WhatsApp, Google Voice, Facebook Messenger even, but we'll use the stock texting app because you know, iOS 18 has RCS now. We'll add that send message action, expand it. And if you want this text to send without any action on your part, pun intended, you can toggle this off and it will just send in the background. I'm gonna keep that toggled on so we can actually see it run. Again, make sure you have it set to a calendar that you want here, or you can also select all calendars. So whatever the next event is across everything, it'll pull that address. Now, when I run this shortcut, it's gonna get my driving time to the next address for that next event, and look, automatically populated text, sorry, running late, be there in 33 minutes. Apparently I'm running very late. But you can also customize this to just automatically send your home ETA to a significant other, getting your current location, driving directions to home, and then sending a text, be home in a certain amount of minutes. I'll put a link to that shortcut down in the video description as well. But when you run that, you see I'll be home in three seconds because it's to my house. But anyway, if you wanna download that Home ETA shortcut, it'll be in the description, and I have a video walking through how to build it up here. Next, one of the new actions in iOS 18 is actually journal actions. You can create new journal entries, and with shortcuts, you can actually start with a dictate text action. This way you can speak a new journal entry, and then it will automatically create it. Set that to the action button, and now you can quickly add journal entries no matter where you are on your phone. When you run this shortcut, Today is iPhone 16 launch day, and I'm making a video about great shortcuts for the action button. I'll tap stop, I can title it, hit done, and I've automatically created a journal entry with the text I dictated and a title. Speaking of dictating notes, you can also do that with the Apple Notes. Start with a dictate text action, and then create a new note. You can choose what folder that note will be a part of, and if you expand this menu, you can even set a name. Here I've set voice name, and then today's date, this way it's automatically titled and I don't have to think about it. If you program this to the action button, the shortcut will run. This is a note about all the shortcuts that I wanna include in the shortcuts, actions, video, things like my clipboard manager, super mute, and more. The first time you run it, it'll ask for permission to actually create that note. And there's my note with the dictated text and the automatic title that I had set as voice note and today's date. 
And now we're getting into even more advanced shortcuts for the action button. The next is a clipboard manager. Applications can't do things like clipboard managers on iOS or iPadOS just because the way they're locked down. So this kind of hacks a clipboard manager and putting it into the action button makes it really convenient. So what this does is it gets what's currently on your clipboard. And then it's gonna add that to a third party app called DataJar. I'll link that app in the video description. It takes a second to set up, but you would basically create a bucket that will save all these text snippets. And then I have here a choose from menu. And it's gonna ask, are you wanting to copy a previous clipping or save the current? If you tap, yes, I wanna get a previous clipping, it will pull everything saved to the data jar, give you an option, and then whatever you select, copy that to your clipboard. And I'm actually already saving what's on your clipboard with this action up here. So if you choose just no save current, it won't do anything. Let's actually program this to the action button to see how it works. Let's say I'm in a note like this with all the links to the shortcuts I'm gonna be putting in the video description. If I hit copy here on the clipboard, now I'll hold the action button, I'll see the menu pop up and say, do you wanna grab a previous clipping or just save the current one? I'm gonna choose no save current. So it doesn't look like anything happened, but if I run the action button again, now it'll say, do you wanna grab a previous clipping? And I say, yes. You'll see the last text that I copied here at the top of the list, or if I wanna grab something previously, I'll choose one of my past clippings. And now if I go to paste, it should paste whatever you just selected. A Little bit of a hacky way to do a clipboard manager on your iPhone, but it works well with the action button. These two shortcuts here can actually change what the action button does depending on focus mode or time of day. So here I start with get the current focus mode. If the name of that focus mode is filming, and just so you know, when you add an if statement like this, you can tap here where it says name, and it might say focus instead. We'll just change it to name. This way you can actually type the name of your focus mode and you don't need that extra step of adding a text block and so on. So now it says that if the focus mode is in filming, show the remote control for an Apple TV. If that focus mode is not enabled, then do something else. That's play fantasy from Earth, Wind & Fire. So if I run this shortcut, because I'm in my filming focus mode, it opened the Apple TV remote. Now, if I disable my focus mode, now it should play Fantasy by Earth, Wind & Fire. I'll hit play, and sure enough, it started Fantasy. So using that if statement, you can change what the action button does depending on what focus mode is active. Similarly, you can decide what the action button does depending on time of day. Here, I started with a format current date, and when you format the date, you can actually have it be in 24 hour time. You do have to choose date, custom date format, and then two capital H's, which is 24 hour format. And then you have to add an if statement that if the formatted date is greater than a certain number. So if you want it to be at 1 p.m. or after do this, you would have to say it's greater than 12 because the next thing greater than 12 is 13 or 1 p.m. All right, actually I had to do some finagling to change some actions around. So if you want this particular one, just grab it via the link down below. But now when I run the shortcut, if it's before 1 p.m., then it's gonna play Fantasy by Earth, Wind & Fire, which it did right there. And if it's after 1 p.m., then it'll start a voice conversation with ChatGPT. If I change this number, I'm gonna put eight because right now it's actually 931. So if it's greater than eight, meaning nine or later, it should do start a voice conversation with ChatGPT. I'll press play and sure enough, it worked. So that's how you can have the action button do something different depending on time of day. Just change this number to be the hour of the day in 24 hour time of when you would like that action to change. And a great update to if actions in iOS 18 is you, is you can actually add multiple conditionals. So if you want it to be after a certain time and during a specific focus mode, you can actually add that conditional here, choose current focus, tap where it says icon and choose name. But if I change this to all and turn off my focus mode, now when it runs, it's gonna play fantasy because even though the time of day is after 8 a.m., I'm not in my filming focus. So you can now have multiple conditionals to have the action button do even more things per time of day, focus mode, and other options. All right, and finally, this is actually what I've had my action button set to for probably the past six months. It is a one action shortcut, and all it is is using the seek action to go forward by three minutes with whatever I'm listening to on my iPhone. I use this for when I'm listening to podcasts, and so, when the ad breaks start, I know it's probably gonna be a longer ad break in some of the shows I listen to. So if I hit play, it's just gonna skip forward three minutes and literally that simple. So those are 15 shortcuts for your new iPhone 16 action button and some bonus tips as well. If you wanna see all those apps that now have control center actions, check out my video right up here. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel before you go and hit that like button. Lots of shortcuts videos already on the channel. I'll put that playlist actually right up here. And if you have those shortcuts requests, 
leave those comments below. I promise I'm getting to another shortcuts request video very soon. And there's also gonna be a ton of iPhone 16 accessory content. iOS 18 content is already on the channel. So be sure to check all of that out. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.